How to get basic TV without cable is a good question. Many of us simply relied on a cable TV provider or a satellite TV provider to do all the hard work and hook up our TV to their service before handing us the remote so we can change the channels as we please. Learn how to cut the cable and watch TV for free while joining over 1 million people who did just that this year. This video will help you find a solution. When it comes to watching TV, there are currently three ways to receive TV programming. Cable or satellite, over the air or OTA, and the internet. OTA is free and provides access to dozens of local channels. Cable or satellite is the most expensive and provides access to hundreds of channels. The internet provides both free and paid options and provides access to thousands of channels from all over the world. Over-the-air antennas have been around since the beginning of television. TV originally started out as a free service supported by advertising and is still around today. An antenna has always been required to receive the signals from the broadcast towers and are generally limited to a range of 60 miles due to the output wattage of the broadcast towers which is regulated by the Federal Communications Commission or FCC. The FCC required major broadcasters to switch from analog to digital back in 2009. This allowed for the delivery of high definition TV over the air and it also allowed for multiple sub-channels to be added to the main channels. For example, where there used to be only channel 3 in analog, sub-channels are now available uh, such as 3.2, 3.3, etc. Not only did this increase the amount of programs available to the viewer, it also increased ad revenue for the local stations. How much of an antenna do you need? Well, you can make one in your kitchen in, in under five minutes using aluminum foil and a pizza box cover. This type of antenna will perform as well as anything you can buy for as much as $150 and will work up to 60 miles away from the broadcast towers. There is a link in the description that will show you how to make this antenna. In order for your antenna to work, you will need a TV that will accept digital signals. All of the TVs sold since 2009 have that capability. Older analog TVs need a converter such as those available in the description below. Digital TVs and converters may have two signal input options on the back. If there are two, one is for cable and the other is for an antenna. You just can't plug in the antenna and expect it to work. It won't. The TV needs to be programmed to the channels available in your location. There is a link in the description to a map that will show you what stations are available in your area based on your zip code. There is also a link that will show you how to program your TV to work with the antenna. The nice thing is that you do not have to run a cable to each TV unless you choose a single outdoor antenna as your signal source. It is far easier to attach an indoor antenna to each TV and the indoor antennas are just as effective as the outdoor antennas are in most cases and sometimes better. Antennas can also be affected by bad weather but unlike satellite dishes you can usually remedy the problem right away by simply moving the antenna a few inches in any direction until the program comes back on. This is much easier to do with individual antennas as opposed to a central outdoor antenna. Another thing to keep in mind is sometimes a TV on one end of the house will be affected by the weather while the TV on the other end of the house is not affected at all. If you want to go with OTA, you can make the transition for under $10 or $50 if you need an analog to digital converter. For those interested in having access to thousands of channels from all over the world, you need an internet connection with a download speed of at least 4 megabytes per second. If you aren't sure what your download speed is, go to speedtest.net and run a test. The internet is a gateway to a huge amount of programming and most of it's free. You can either connect the computer to the TV or by other interfaces such as a Roku box, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, or Google Chromecast. You can combine resources such as a computer and Roku box, or your phone and Chromecast. Additional streaming devices include PlayStation 3 and 4, 
Xbox 360 and Xbox One, and the Nintendo Wii. Many newer Blu-ray players will also allow you to connect to Netflix, Hulu, and other paid services as well as free services. Another option is to upgrade to a new digital TV. You can buy a high definition smart TV with Roku already built in for a few hundred dollars. Once your TV is set up to receive streaming programs over the internet, there are dozens of options available ranging in price from free to $90 a month. Which way you go kind of depends on what type of programming you are interested in. We divide programming into two areas, pre-recorded and live. Sports fans prefer to watch the event live, whereas movie and TV people aren't bound by those restrictions. Most channels offer pre-recorded material, however, live sports on demand is gaining ground. For pre-recorded material, Roku offers over 4,000 channels, most of which are free. The other plug-in interfaces are more limited in what they have available, but all of them offer access to many of the paid services such as Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, and Sling, to name a few. Depending on how diversified you want to get, it is easy to spend a lot of money on the paid services, and you could essentially end up right where you started before you decided to cut the cord. But that doesn't happen very often. One nice thing about the paid services is that you can pay on a month-to-month -month basis. No contracts, no long-term commitments, and no installation or other add-on costs. Most of these services provide movies and TV shows, and they usually have the same content available, so you only need to pay for one provider to get what you want. And if one of the other providers has something you want that isn't available anywhere else, you can switch at the end of the month, which keeps your cost down. Some of you may be reluctant to give up a specific show you like to watch that is only available through your cable connection. Once you cut the cord though and pursue alternate viewing options, chances are very high that you will adapt much easier than you thought you would and you will likely find three other shows to replace the one you are currently stuck on. Plus the new shows will likely have multiple seasons available so you can binge watch your new selections. You might be surprised how easy it is to make the switch. One way to find out is to try it. All of these paid services have trial periods from 7 days to 30 days that are free. The free trials help you get acclimated to a different way of watching TV since there is a small learning curve involved with a different technology from what you have gotten used to. Perhaps the best thing about streaming services is that you can watch what you want when you want to watch. Another huge advantage is that you don't have to wait a week for the next episode. You can watch a complete season in just a couple of days. The main paid providers, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime Video, are constantly changing their lineups. They usually add a large amount of new material at the beginning of the month as well as remove material, but they are starting to spread the additions throughout the month. There are several online guides that provide lists of coming attractions for each service each month. More and more TV is being offered over the internet. It will soon take over as the main provider of movies, sports, and TV shows. The networks specific to cable and satellite delivery, such as HGTV, a and &E, TMC, etc., are developing online bundles for sale since they realize their viewer base is rapidly diminishing due to the huge loss in cable satellite subscribers. Over 1 million subscribers canceled their connection to cable or satellite in 2017 and that rate is expected to continue through 2018 and 2019. Welcome to Cheaper TV.